you know, Yugo is this rec re recurring character from Toke that is consistently crossing paths through Vizzy. Um, I think, I think at this point, here. at this point, wasn't he like the leader of Toke? I think so. Uh, yeah. He, yes, he was yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yes. before that, he was just like a newly joined An underling. Like, underling. Yeah. Exactly. He was a he was a team racket grunt. <laughs> yes, there you go. There you go. Now he's Giovanni. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs>
she was trying to say tr- trying to prevent the airplane from uh from exploding oh well, that, no, I think two? that was in the, the second episode. Yeah, that was okay. episode two, but they did air the first two at the same time. So, oh, yeah. Which very okay. Nice. Oh, good so yeah, that's what that. we mentioned. Yeah. Oh, so, oh awesome. okay. Because yeah. okay. I thought it was the first episode. At the end of the first episode, you just... Yeah, okay. Yeah, they explosion. just released the first two episodes. Okay, so, okay. Then, gotcha. so then we need to go to episode two then, I guess. Because, yeah. Yes. So then episode two is like... Like, the first we had the first mission where um we had to... There's like all these different events or milestones in history that leads up to the AI uprising. So one of them yep. was um was uh, uh this politician, he was about to get assassinated and then uh so it's Vivi's job to save him from like the anti AI uh terrorist group known as Toke, which we'll see a lot of later in the show. Too much. So... <laughs> Indeed. Or too much of the same guy. Hey man, gotta have somebody <laughs> to hate. Oh yeah. yeah. And throughout the entire time, like over a hundred years or not he actually wasn't there the whole time, but They've got, they've got good it. administrative people. Their HR team is, you know, second to oh, That's how they stay together for so long. Great benefits. Yeah. Yes. Yep. yep. So, and then, uh, first mission, you know, like, it's, like, uh, Toke, uh, he, they, you know, end up, like, uh, trying to, like, destroy him in the building. There's all these, I'm trying, I'm just, like, really, like, like, trying to, like, sum up, like, a lot of things happening. Just to show that, like, mm-hmm. In the end, like she did save, she saved the politician. Um, she had some effect on one of the Tok members, and then, and then we had that cliffhanger with like the the airplane, uh, where um the little girl who named her she, um, she gets caught, she get uh dies in a air airplane um explosion, and Vivi like knew about this from the future. She knew that was gonna happen, and hospital tried to stop her because he thought that, uh. You know these events like you can't you can't stop you can't alter history too much you can only stick to the plan so that was kind of like the beginning of like the conflict one of the conflicts between uh Vivi and Matsumoto just like how how much she she got personally attached to to the things that are happening versus like the overall mission so and I had and then I had like that giant discussion at the first one where I thought like oh man this is just like in her head or something like that like trying to fight like with my I had like the oh, giant yeah, I remember thing. You had stuff I went on like the Reddit, Reddit and stuff yeah the base and... of that Reddit hole where I thought where I was just <laughs> thinking way too hard and then we find out no it was an actual time skip and then those things actually happened in real time I'm like oh well okay then never mind yeah so, I spent so much time on that so I went through like <laughs> a lot of things for first episode so I guess I just want everyone just go their first impressions after the first. Uh, one hour premiere, the first two episodes. Uh, I, I can go first. I well, one. I think it definitely benefited with the one hour premiere, uh, because that mm. that for how the first how the first episode ended, I thought like it was kind of interesting, but it was one like really slow and also didn't really kind of give us much. It also seemed very generic at the same time, where obviously where we say you know uh where we make a uh, Terminator references quite quite often. But then the second one was the week where we actually got to see like more of the story. Obviously, we get to see with studio animation. We got to see the music or listen or hear the music, which um, where I think we all thought like, damn, this is actually really good. And then, of course, it had that whole ending with the airplane burning up. So and then that's when I went down the whole Reddit hole. I was like, damn, this is this is uh, this is going to be crazy. And then, um, mm-hmm. yeah, it just kind of just went from there. Yeah, yeah, no, I got I I to say, go. Go, go ahead, yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, no, I, I got to say, it, it pulled me in pretty well. Uh, it was definitely hooked from the first two episodes, and I, I couldn't wait to see where they're gonna go. Again, there was a lot of hype behind it because of like you know what studio and the uh, the altar was. You know, uh, I lo- I really love Rezero, so if it was the guy who came over Rezero, this must be good as well, right? Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, sometimes the hype is uh, does more harm than good, but um, <laughs> with just the first couple episodes, it, it definitely got me hooked, for sure. Sounds like we're going to expand on that later, but go ahead, Justin. Yes. Definitely will. Well, no, I, I think both Thread and Koo kind of, you know, hit a lot of the things that the series did well in its inter- introduction. Um, personally, I don't have too much to add to that. I, I think, again, you know, really big fan of Wit Studio and ReZero as well, so to have them kind of come together and, and work on an original piece that definitely um, had me interested from the get-go. And I think, you know, from this first episode, they kept it simple enough that there wasn't too many characters being introduced, which was good. Um, But even with the one-hour premiere, I think the only hesitancy I had was that I was interested to see how they were going to handle the, um, I guess, accomplishment of changing the effects of this 100-year period. 
Um, but that's something that obviously we, you know, we'll talk about here as we go through the different arcs or the different time periods that uh, this hundred years kind of focuses on. Uh, for me, mm-hmm. like, um, I always give credit for our original series just because, like, there's such a risk to take. And so I always will give them the chance. And so, I, I, even but like, the, for me, like, the first episode's like, I wasn't too hyped on it. I just thought it was like, it was okay. It was sort of good. But, like, I wasn't like, even with like with, with Zio and ReZero, like, I was waiting for like the payoff. I didn't like see like being really hyped in the first two episodes. What? What? Uh, I mean, right. <laughs> like, because I don't know, just like, just, just that first, even that, for that first mission where she had to like save, save the politician, it's like, I didn't really feel. I don't. Know, I didn't feel like the stakes or or any like high tension from it. So I just I didn't really understand where the story was going from this point. So I was I was, I was very much in a wait and see that position. Yeah. Well, to be I fair, it's more of an introduction to the series, right? I I can't imagine them making it super intense from the get go. So yeah, it's, it's just, a it's a fine line that you have to tread, right? And especially mm-hmm. with the the I number think... of episodes that they did have here, it's like what well, yeah. what well, you can't expect too much, I guess per se. Yeah. with what they're working with but yeah. um i think if anything the one thing i forgot to add is to Stride and ku's point as well like that ending of quote-unquote the second episode or the end of the one hour premiere with um that conflict between matsumoto and vivi i think that really is what hooked me in the sense of you you got this understanding that it's not really what seems to be a partnership between the two at this point in time it really looks like matsumoto is going to have things be done his way and he shows right at the end of that episode like that he doesn't care to, you know, rough Vivi up a little mm-hmm. bit if that's what's needed to bring her back to the correct path to stopping well, this AI humanity. Okay, war. actually, it's, it's, right. a good point that, it's a good point that you bring that up, Justin, because that actually, that actually, that was hyping me up too. So I guess I should, I should say, like, actually, that, <laughs> yeah, I, that part actually made me more hype because everything before that, I wasn't really excited, but then the last part really, it, it made it, it that's what stood out to me, and that what made it stood out. For like the other like to the all like the time travel tropes that I was seeing, so well a lot of the times too like we thought uh, Matsumoto was gonna be evil as well. Uh, mm-hmm. We had a lot of those conversations where like, damn, this guy seems like he's evil. Or like later on in the series, we're like, man, I hope this guy's not evil. And then we, and it, we just kind of <laughs> kept going back and forth with it. And then even like at the beginning, like after these two episodes, I I think I remember saying like I thought this was like one of the shows I was most hyped for for the season as well. Yep, mm-hmm. you did. Yep. <laughs> We'll see how that how that pays off here. Yes, yes. <laughs> I already forgot what else. Was like we we digress. Season, but, so, yeah. on to our our next kind of arc here. The next yeah. arc, uh, the spatial experience, the spatial hotel. This is probably this is probably my favorite like arc of the show. I really liked how this arc went, where um we had like you know the next the next milestone was um we had the space hotel and the space hotel was gonna crash because like apparently it was being hijacked by an AI and then this also made like the ai you know the anti-ai sentiments like even more like it gave rise to more, to more anti-ai sentiments because like they thought it was like their fault for for this so mm-hmm. um here we learn more about i guess we learn more about um vv's like the sisters of you know more i guess like other ais are kind of modeled after her or share some of her same mm-hmm. like like source code so uh, her descendants, cool. in a sense, just a yeah. little updated by fifteen yeah. years. Oh yeah, I should mention too. There's lots of time skips in this show. So, so after that second ending, yeah. we suddenly skip like fifteen years. Mm. So. Thought, it was just basically just. You know, <laughs> I thought it was just like these wars in their minds, but never mind. Yeah, so. damn you, Reddit. <laughs> and then, um, I don't know how obvious it was, but like, I mean, we made it seem like. Like uh, the sister was it, like Estella. We thought like mm-hmm. the show made it seem like you know she was gonna be like she, they're hinting that she was she's the one that caused it in the history. I I feel like we all like, kind of knew that like you just, there's more in the story than that. So um, yeah. I guess even though like, yeah, I per- oh, go, go ahead, Ku. Oh no, like like personally, I thought it was just too obvious for it to be Estella. Like there had to be a reasoning behind it. Um, yeah. Although I didn't know exactly who the culprit was per se, but but like, yeah, I felt like the show was just trying to like, like you're saying, it made it too obvious. So when they, they right. just, when they showed off, like you know, it was like the other girl, uh, for her name, um, uh, Liz- you, Elizabeth. Well, not Which Elizabeth. One? It was or the the, uh, 
The pink hair girl? It? Yeah, pink hair girl. Yeah. She was the one who got hijacked mm. by, by Tolk, right? It was Tolk that hijacked, or was it Elizabeth who came on board and hijacked uh, pink hair girl? Yeah, I'm trying to remember uh, the exact sequences. I thought she was with, uh, but I, I guess with, uh, I thought she got like yeah, I thought she got hijacked, but I don't know by from who though. I, I want to say she wasn't hijacked. I think Elizabeth just kind of took over Estella's uh, persona oh, in a sense, I, and yeah, then she convinced point, the Pinkhair girl to join them. Right. So okay. I don't think she was hijacked, but she was convinced by Elizabeth to be yeah, okay. so, so basically, what occurs. Yeah, is yeah, yeah is, is Vivi is skeptical of Estella being, you know, the individual responsible for, for the crash. Mm -hmm. Um, and so she kind of learns a little bit more about how Estella came to be like the head staff member of the mm -hmm. Sunrise Space Hotel. And so, you know, they go into the backstory of she was the AI assigned to like the previous human owner. Um, previous own human owner ended up dying and kind of imparting his will or mission into Estella of keeping this uh sunrise hotel like a great kind of experience for humans uh -huh. um but then to your point ku what what then happens later in that episode is that um as vivian matsumoto are, are trying to figure out further what leads to the like destruction or sabotage of the sunrise falling down to earth is that um vivi runs into a different kind of version of estella because she notices that, uh, I think it was like the bracelet or something. And so to your yeah. point, we essentially learn at this point that uh, Elizabeth, who is um, Estella's twin that was kind of discarded due to not kind of meeting the same standards as Estella and picked up by Toke. She is basically a, a Toke AI agent that mm. has come on board with Toke to sabotage, you know, the, the spacecraft and stuff. Yep. Thanks for the, the summary, because I, yeah, I couldn't yeah. remember much from this. But um, I guess for me, this, I, I really like this arc because, um, again, like that conflict between Matsumoto and Vivi, like, because Matsumoto, he was so, like, like he's so into, like, the whole, like, this is the history you need to, like, like this is why I know, and, like, that's why you need to, like, just do what I say. And Vivi, he kept pushing back, and she was saying, you know, like, this isn't, like, it's not as black and white as you think, Matsumoto, like, there's more in a story than that. And then, mm. and just learning more about that, like, you know, I really enjoyed that part about this, about this, like, it just showed more depth into, like, the more the, the struggles here, than just, like, just, just, like, the standard, like, just, uh, I don't know, like, AI's going crazy and stuff, so that, that was, like, probably, like, my favorite part of, like, this, um, this arc. I think to kind of add to that, another great part of this arc is, the connectiveness of characters that we've you know just learned of at this point like so one of the things is uh momika's sister is actually one of the humans aboard the oh, the right. sunrise at the time uh -huh. um and so uh both vivi and her kind of have interactions and the sister you know asks vivi if she's the same ai that her sister knew and, and i think originally vivi decides to say no she's not just because she doesn't want her to know that connection yep. um and then one of the things too that we forgot to mention in terms of like characters carrying over throughout time that we'll talk about you know at the further arcs is um in the first arc with the saving of the prime minister vivi actually saves one of the toke members um yugo i think his name is yep. um and we learned that now in this arc uh yugo who is a toke member that was saved by vivi is the one responsible for bringing elizabeth onto the oh, arc yeah. here. so now you know yugo is this rec re recurring character from toke that is consistently crossing paths through vivi um i think i think at this point here. At this point, wasn't he like the leader of Tug? I think so. Uh, yeah. he, yes, he was yes, yeah, correct. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. yes. before that, he was just like a newly joined An underling. Like, underling. Yeah. Exactly. He was a he was a team racket grunt. <laughs> yes, there you go. There you go. Now he's Giovanni. <laughs> yes, yes. He climbed that that terrace ladder up to yeah, the top. Yeah, real quick, man. Hey, man. Fifteen years. Yep. that's enough time to do that. Plenty of time. It's a lot of time. Yeah. Yeah. Also, want to give a shout out to like the the fight scene between. Uh, uh, VV and uh, Elizabeth, one of the best action scenes in the show here. Just with Seo flexing their, their fighting choreography. So, it's what they can do. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, let, let, let's be fair. You know, all the scenes are pretty damn good, but I guess this all is right. the first one that that left an impression on most people, I would mm -hmm. say. Right. Well, well I guess yeah. I'll, I should mention too, like like the 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 space tourism scene, like when they had like the 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 roof, 
like the clear glass roof and showing all the space shots. Those are really good too. I really enjoyed those. Mm. They made space space look very nice. <laughs> I mean, space is always nice, right? Stars, glittering stuff, deep space. And, then, and we should also mention at the end of this arc too, where like the the space hotel still crashed, but it, they actually uh, minimized the damage where they were able to break it into pieces or parts. Mm. Where in, technically it still crashed, but it didn't like cause a bunch of death. It, yeah, yeah so a lot of it just ended up burning up in the atmosphere yep. due to yeah. the actions taken by both uh, Estella and Elizabeth kind of has her change of heart of wanting to stay with her sister. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But it's like going back to that point right, where Matsumoto, he just thought he just thought it was like, oh, just kill the AI and then you save the hotel. But as, as, as we learned, it's, the history is more complicated than that. And then yeah. and BB just did her best uh, the situation and you know, she saved everyone and the hotel, it just I think it just uh, crashed in the ocean so I didn't like injure anyone either so mm-hmm. yeah, it didn't yes. add to any animosity so she, between she, she, AI she did, and humanity she basically did as best she could to alter the timeline to make sure like the AIs don't get the blame like they were supposed to originally mm-hmm. right I mean overall she completed her mission and you know did it the best she could but uh, I just want to say I think this arc was probably my my favorite arc out of the whole series because you know like progression of the, the plot was very smooth character development was really nice and I think at the end of this arc, we kind of saw, uh, well, for me, it kind of clarified uh, whether or not Matsumoto was a good guy or not. Because to me, I always saw him as, you know, just the guy who was strictly about the mission, right? You know, don't divert from the mission, just do what you're told and, you know, everything should be okay. And then at the end of this, see how Matsumoto responded and actually agreed to help Vivi follow through the plan uh, using her methods. It, it really shows that, you know, they really, are partners and they're just doing the best to their knowledge as to how to complete the mission so uh otherwise yeah fighting scene the music i think since it's still fresh towards the beginning i i I gotta say this arc was probably the best showcase of what vivi had to offer yep yeah okay so that's a really fair fair assessment of it no like um yeah i think that's basically all i have for this arc yeah Yeah. so so figured that so i'll say like yeah so like that so combining like that episode two ending plus having this arc uh like directly like uh sitting right after it's like we had a really strong beginning for vv mm-hmm. so then move on to this next arc i like i have trouble remembering this so i'm gonna need help again for, yeah i can for, i can help you out here, David. Okay. so I, I think to your point this was a this next arc that we're going to talk about quote unquote the the metal float arc Uh, which we'll get into here is a really great point to as you were mentioning david you know matsumoto's hesitancy to deviate from plans because um even to ku's point you know with this this sunrise arc we got to see matsumoto and vivi really kind of become a team of sorts and we think that you know that's gonna help pave the road to a smoother kind of uh succession of events for them to you know prevent this ai human war But so as we kind of transition into this next arc that takes five years after the Sunrise event, we actually learned that even though they tried to minimize as much damage as possible and reduce that um, AI kind of um, hate, that it actually still had opposite results that caused AI technology to progress much faster than even Matsumoto had kind of known from his time period. And so what that kind of resulted in is the creation of this unmanned facility called the Metal Float, which is completely run by um, AI robots to help kind of improve AI technology further. And so um, what we learned at this point is that Matsumoto comes, you know, finds Vivi, tells Vivi that, hey, even though we did, you know, all these things leading up to this point, something's not right. Things aren't as, as, as good as we thought they could be. And so Matsumoto, you know, informs her of this metal float. They actually go and meet this ex toke member, uh, Tatsuya Saiki, who is uh, one of the, like, main doctors or creators of the metal float. Um, and so with his introduction um, to Vivian Matsumoto, we also get to learn about um, how he, you know, brought about the metal float, but more specifically, his relationship with an AI called Grace. Um, And so when we first get introduced to Grace, Grace is just labeled as like the attendant of his home, um, which is kind of like near the metal float and everything. But as this arc progresses further, we learn that um, this doctor and Grace were actually lovers and one of the first lovers in history between humans and AI. Um, 
And so with kind of the uh, relationship being unveiled there, that all further kind of snowballs into once Matsumoto and Vivi decide to head out to this metal float to see, you know, what's kind of going on. And also, as I forgot to mention, um, they're given a virus to basically cease operations of the metal float because even the doctor has been having kind of these suspicions that, you know, things are not going to, to what they expected them to be. But once they do get there, essentially, you know, Matsumoto and Vivi arrive, they meet all these kind of AI robots that very much, if, you know, anyone's played the Near Automata games, they kind of look like those little, like, trash can-looking guys. <laughs> yes. Super, super I, cute. I remember now. Um, yep. <laughs> but um, this once they continue. go there... Yeah, right? And so once they get there and, and, and Vivi, you know, utilizes the virus, um, things don't work as planned, of course. You know, there always has to be something that doesn't go according to plan. And so while that initially is a new problem that happens, you know, lo and behold, Toke decides to also show up at the Metal Flark with their with their own kind of um, invasion of sorts, because, you know, they're also trying to stop the things going on here. Um, and I think, again, at this point with, you know, Toke kind of starting this invasion, we again get Yugo brought back into the picture. And so Strand's Vivian favorite. him. Yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Vivi and him have have another kind of uh, meetup of sorts after all these years. Um, and then we the, the big pinnacle of this arc, I would say, is that we get to learn that the main reason for the metal float um, kind of going haywire is that the AI responsible for the metal float is actually the original Grace that mm. this doctor was married to. So, you know, way back that Grace that Matsumoto and Vivi met when they went to the doctor's house, that was just a, a, a copy or a replica of Grace. And so the doctor was trying to find this way to, you know, save Grace, but didn't kind of know how to do so. Um, and I think that's pretty much the initial summary. So I, I guess without getting to, you know, what the conclusion of this arc looks like, what did you guys think about this this metal float arc? There's so many emotional scenes, like in a sense where, like first when you see like uh, when they actually go to the float and then they like you're you see like all these uh, the little trash, the little trash bin ones where they're just trying to like uh, like uh, when they're just trying to understand humans and basically just, you know, make them feel either like happy or like, you know, like welcome them. Whereas, like, all the scenes where it, it didn't seem like any malice towards them, mm -hmm. but then you just, from what like, before, you kind of just knew, like, what, what was going to happen, that they were going to just, you know, flip out. Um, but, like, all those all, all those parts where I thought were, like, actually really nice to see. And, of course, like, the, the resolution of the arc, where, that like, all that stuff that happened at the end, where it didn't really see any of that coming, but at the same... I actually... Did any of you see... Um, did any of you guys like see what Tatsi like basically like what Tatsi ended up doing? Like, do you did you I guess see that coming or? <laughs> uh, this uh, yeah. was kind of uh, suspicious for sure. Um, but I guess I didn't really expect them to do anything too crazy. No, in a sense, like I didn't expect them to be like a major player in in the, in the plot or yeah. in solving the plot. So yeah, well, I, I guess I, I meant like uh. The whole like when 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 uh was it Tatsu committed suicide? Where mm -hmm. uh that whole thing where you and then you actually just see like how much like it hit Vivi in that kind of brief moment, a you know, brief mm -hmm. period until like the next episode that like, like, that comes up. Yeah, and, and I think um to your point though, sir, and before getting to to his suicide, you know the yeah. the kind of uh events that led to that accumulation of him deciding to take his life yeah. was that. Um, when Vivi, you know, realizes that Grace is actually the, the AI responsible for Metal Float and that yeah, nothing, that was the only way. The, you yeah. know, the virus, yeah, didn't work. And, and she's kind of now come to this first point where, you know, she always tries to do, Vivi, this is always tries to do things that would result in the least harm to both AIs and humans. Yeah, but uh -huh. I feel like this was the first point that we really get to see that Vivi doesn't have a choice. Vivi yeah. has to destroy Grace. Yeah. And so kind of to your point, you know, one, that's a big development from Vivi's perspective that once she takes those actions against, you know, even um, Tatsuya's kind of wants, because obviously he doesn't want anything to happen to Grace. Um, when she does that, that further snowballs into him taking his life. Yeah. And also now Vivi really kind of sinking in with the reality of what is needing to be done to prevent this war coming at yeah. the end of these hundred years. Yeah, or basically, or, or just like certain things where like she's not able to save everybody that she, uh, that she was, you know, but where she did, she comes across. Yeah, where, not you know, all sunshines and rainbows. No, no matter what you try to do. 
yeah. yeah so I, like these so the, like these couple episodes i think i think this may have been like uh one of my favorite arcs just be just like i said like just the kind of development with uh with vivi just kind of realizing like it's more than just like the ai where they you know they, they actually like they, where she was actually having like feelings she like you know the, like the shock with just like uh what just happened and also the feeling where you know she's not able to save like these people where she was wanting to save and then just realizing that and then also just kind of like the feeling of like a loss as well it was a uh, i don't know i i just thought like i hit like all those like all those points just uh and then but i mean but by far the worst thing was just finding out that that uh yugo was still alive and then he's still apart and uh, well, halfway through the season the the thing that kind of <laughs> like got me confused about this was that she didn't go into this kind of shock when momoka died in episode two right mm-hmm. and they were a lot well, closer for sure so were... uh, that, that's why I, that's why i was a little confused right like she was able to continue on her mission and of course there was a 15 year time skip so i guess there was a way for her to kind of cope with it and move on but uh for for the scientists to die and cause it to go into complete shock and uh you know like do whatever she did and um and you know without spoiling uh and to do exactly what she did later on uh i was i was actually kind of shocked to me like why she did do that so well uh, i guess that was my complaint well, I think with Momoka, like yeah. the whole thing is like it, it didn't happen like right in front of her when she was exactly. basically bring up right in the face of. I mean, basically, you know, she she uh, had some debris hit her in a sense. We'll just say that. Um, no, but I, then she was there. Like she saw the plane itself in person explode. So I imagine yeah. that would be as dramatic. I think with this one, to to Stratton's point, like Vivi had this to really just, like too. punch a punch a hole in Grace's chest. To, yeah, to, she... to, to kill her and shut her down. So yeah. it mm-hmm. is kind of that that physical responsibility that you know he did these things and she had to do these things and then you know kind of leading into Sren's point of now seeing a human in front of you you know take their life and and, and yeah. be just in that visceral kind of moment mm-hmm. um it all kind of just came to a head but not to say i, I think your point ku is still very valid that you know the attachment that we see between vivi and momica when we do get to learn you know that that she dies in that plane crash and it doesn't have as much of effect it mm-hmm. is kind of a, a little sloppy, I guess, from like, okay, what really does affect you, you know, Vivi? Right. So. Well, well, the one thing that, I, I mean, this is also like when Momoka died, this is like the beginning of Vivi when, and then she's been kind of like evolving in a sense with like emotion and feelings and everything else, which mm-hmm. kind of brings up to everything else like later, later on that we'll talk about it. But I, so I feel like towards like the middle of the season, I feel like she was kind of like more in tune with like, she was actually, she had more feels in a sense. And I think it just kind of impacted her more. Mm-hmm. That's what and I think, I think I think that's a good concept that we can touch upon is that across yeah. you know these different arcs we really are getting to see Vivi more human you know, elements yeah become more humanized yeah. through her experiences that she has so yep um, yeah I don't I think that's all I have for this arc though yeah. um, uh, I don't yeah, anything from your end, David? Yeah, for me. Uh, so, sorry, David. Yeah, uh, no, I say, no, I don't have much to say because just for me, this arc is when I was just starting to lose it with the story, like. I was like getting, what? well, I mean, I was just getting oh like, God. I was just like, I just was kind of getting lost in like what they were trying, like the message and what they were trying to say. So, and also like kind of just once, like once we re- they had to reveal that like Grace is like the AI in the the island in the middle float, and then I kind of figured, okay, well, like like Vivi probably has to kill her, and then like and then when they had, when they pan to the shot where like, back to the the scientist in the church, I was like, oh, like. I, I, I kind of assume that he was going to commit suicide, so, like, it wasn't too much of a surprise what's happening, but, like, this is where... And then also, and to his friend's point, too, like, seeing um, Yuko again from Tolk, like, it just... Like, the story was starting to lose me at this point, so I wasn't mm-hmm. really feeling much from this arc, so I don't know. I guess I don't really have much to say. Yeah, and I don't think that's the commonality yeah, that we'll talk about later, is the the limited time that we get to experience with uh, certain characters. So hard yeah. to get to those attachments, but... Yeah. um cool well with, with that said then you know we get to move in our next argument to have yet another time skip of oh, yeah. uh, 40 years so you know Dang, we've now it really 40 been years two and a half times yeah wow yeah. i didn't realize it was that was long a, a super long time so um essentially what what we get led into in this next arc as as ku was saying you know at the end of the metal float vivi has this really kind of mental shutdown of just this over you know loadedness of emotions and basically goes through a complete reboot where she forgets all of her memories as Vivi and kind of regresses back to Diva. Exactly. So 
Um, essentially, after this 40-year gap, where we are at now in this story is um, Diva has continued to evolve into a very well-renowned songstress. Um, and she is what a uh, part of this festival called the Zodiac Signs Festival, which is basically um, another event created to um, promote goodwill between humans and AI. And so all of the um, participants in this Zodiac sign are AI songstress. So Vivi just having to be, you know, one of them with her kind of rise to fame here. Um, and shortly into the, the introduction of this arc, we also get to meet a, a younger AI named Ophelia, you know, another ancestor, if you will, of um, Vivi, Estella, all of them in that line. And with the introduction of this character of Ophelia, um, we, we get to see a bit of a, a relationship between Diva and Ophelia, where Diva is serving kind of this bigger sister because Ophelia, you know, is kind of this shy, timid songstress. She's uh, a little bit clumsy, as we see, I think, in the first introduction. You know, she, she trips into a fountain and has to change her clothes and everything. And that's how Diva kind of, you know, extends her, her arm to help her out as one of these more senior songstresses in the, in the event. Um, but after that, uh, we get kind of back into the focus of, okay, you know, we're here for a reason. Something has to relate to this event that leads to, you know, this war at the end of this hundred years. And so that's when we get Matsumoto brought back into the picture. Um, and when Matsumoto first runs into Diva, there's, you know, kind of this realization from Diva's end that she, she recognizes Matsumoto, but doesn't know why. Because again, you know, she, she's completely forgotten all her memories of Vivi. Uh, but to this point, Matsumoto is very focused on the mission. And so he decides to really kind of strong harm his way back into bringing Vivi back. And so um, Diva is, is a bit a little, little bit reluctant, which, you know, I mean, as anyone, you would be, you know, some cube comes up to you and he's like, hey, we got to stop this war. And to Diva's point, she's like, what war? What the what hell are you the talking fuck? about? Like, you know, oh, you know, you're Vivi. We've been through all these events and everything. And so it's really kind of this realization of Diva that, you know, she's remembering bits and pieces as Matsumoto is explaining it to her, but not really having this this full trust in him yet. Um, but what really takes over that trust and what, you know, eventually leads to Divi, uh, oh my God, I want to combine Diva and Divi, <laughs> Divi. No worries, no worries. Uh, yeah, new yes. official name. Um, <laughs> what really leads to the point of Diva trusting Matsumoto and kind of going along with this plan again is, uh, Diva notices a, a shady individual kind of hanging around uh, Ophelia and um, at one point decides to chase after this individual. And, and through this kind of series of events, we find out that that individual is our favorite Toke member yet again, Yugo, mm -hmm. now, you know, stepping into this event here. And so um, this part, I'll, I'll have to remember a little bit more because I remember from first watching this, it was a little bit confusing of what was going on with Yugo here because to our eyes as a viewer in this arc, he hadn't aged as much as you would expect in a 40 year gap. Mm -hmm. um, and so eventually, you know, we, we learned that he's, I guess, an AI copy of yeah. himself from the future and, and not, you know, the Yugo that we've known from the previous arcs. Um, so that becomes a whole thing. And then on top of all that, if you didn't think we were getting a bunch of information thrown at us, we also learn that um, the main reason that they are there at this point in time is that Ophelia commits suicide for some, you know, unknown reason at this time. And so that leads us down a whole nother rabbit hole. We have the mm -hmm. events, you know, occurring between Diva and Yugo. And then now to top it off, we have this rogue AI named Antonio, who, you know, great name for an AI. All right. We've, we've got <laughs> all, these, all these great names. And then you got Antonio. The he, AI. Looked yeah. like, he looked like an Antonio. <laughs> yeah, how the very yeah. anime. It's... But right. uh, real, real quick though, wasn't the part the point of this arc uh, was to prevent the suicide, right? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I was getting a little bit ahead of myself with yeah, the, I, I forgot. We, yeah, we totally forgot. Yugo and, and Diva. So <laughs> right. no, thanks for for keeping me on track there. No problem, man. I, I but um, yeah, you know, then we get a little bit of quick backstory that you know Antonio was sort of the manager of Ophelia. He was responsible for making her um, mission or dream as a songstress come to life, and you know, lo and behold shit hits the fan and what essentially happens is that ophelia takes her life at an earlier point and antonio can't accept that 
you know, without Ophelia in the picture, his mission is now kind of thrown into disarray. And so what is the logical choice that Antonio comes up with? Oh, I'll just become Ophelia. <laughs> so Easy. now we have the Ophelia in this current arc, um, basically being Antonio and just trying to pretend and live out that he is Ophelia. And so all these things now come to to a a point, and essentially we have Yugo and Diva having their kind of standoff, and then we have Matsumoto and Ophelia or Antonio having their respective standoff on the roof of this auditorium. Um and so yeah, that that stuff all goes down. Matsumoto ends up um, you know, disarming or or stopping uh Ophelia from committing the suicide. Um and while he kind of eventually stops that altercation, he realizes that Diva is currently in a bit of a pickle with Yugo since um, you know, they're kind of well, they're both AIs at this point, so it's a bit of more of a fair fight between them and, and Diva admittedly is getting a little bit more overwhelmed because, again, remember, she is not Vivi at this time. She has no recollections of her memory of Vivi. And I think the other big thing that we forgot to mention is that way back in the first season, um, Matsumoto actually made Vivi download, like, a combat protocol that made her really good at, at fighting and everything. And so but she first fact, refused. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and the fact that now that she doesn't have this fighting protocol, that's kind of another thing of her just being overwhelmed by this AI Yugo. Um, so they all kind of eventually come together. Matsumoto comes in clutch at the end to, to save uh, Diva from Yugo. Um, but even still, at, at the very kind of um, end of this altercation, uh, Yugo ends up downloading a virus into Vivi, or into Diva, excuse me, that returns the memories of Vivi. And so that, I think... You know, very long-winded, so apologies for that. Hopefully, no, no, everybody that's listening good. Keep up with very, me. That was good, man. That very was good. good summary. Um, Much better than I could yes. do, so yeah, she should be the whole uh, same. Same. That's where we then get to <laughs> the pinnacle of this arc where, you know, they've stopped the suicide of Ophelia or Antonio, and then now we've had this new uh, thing kind of arise where the question is, you know, why is Yugo now an AI sent back in the past? And furthermore, where the hell did he get the technology to um, return, you know, Vivi's memories to Diva? Uh, because I think Matsumoto had said that this was technology that he was even himself not aware of. And so now that was a question of his own curiosity of how did how did this happen? You know, actually, where, actually, where did this tech come from? I don't remember. They actually reveal that later. I don't remember anything from this. I don't, I don't think I do either. Okay. Don't so it's not, not just me. I was like, when you brought that up, I was like, wait, when did this all happen yeah. in the story? That may have been a missed... Uh, yeah. And, and maybe missed we just miss it. It could be something, now that I think about it, that's related to, as we'll learn in the next arc, or two arcs after this, with um, Yugo's descendants and their relationship to Tok. Uh, there's another character that we'll talk about, oh, it, and, right. and maybe that's yeah. the reason of where they got that technology okay. from. Yeah. Um, but it, so, OK, so now we've had kind of the overview of this arc with um, the oh, we'll call it the Ophelia arc. What were your guys thoughts here, you know, coming off of the metal float that sounds like had this, mixed reviews already? Did this just further lose your interest or this was like my least favorite arc overall? I just Same. thought I just thought Same. the whole like memory loss thing was just a waste of time, especially since like we, get, we have limited time already with just like the 13 episodes, like this whole like just having her. Basically, having to reset everything and just having again having the reintroduction, having Matsumo have to reintroduce his mission to like Eva again. It's like, why are we going over this in like in a series that doesn't need the, like the recap or whatever? It's like, so like the whole like memory loss thing just feels like a waste of time. And I guess I can actually, I mean, I don't mind actually, I didn't mind the affiliate part. I get, it kind of makes sense, like the way you think about it from an AI perspective, like, like the way. That his logic thought of it like it made sense to me so i didn't mind that as much it's just the whole thing of yugo coming up i guess like really like mixing in Ophelia with yugo like a lot like i, I didn't really like so overall it was, it was, yeah it just, that's why this is my least favorite arc of the show there's parts of that that i i am I, I, um, that i agreed with david with like i um the when she lost her memories, I thought like if if it only went like one or two episodes, I thought like it, it had like the the meaning behind it, where just like how much it impacted Vivi, like with the, the previous episode when she you know when she saw like the suicide, 
where it, it had a kind of like the impact where it basically it was like so traumatic for her that she just basically shut down completely and just kind of like let over like let this other persona in a sense like take over so i thought like that had like the meaning for it but then it went on for uh, a little bit too long because we before we were so used to seeing our arcs for like two episodes and what and i think this was three episodes yeah this is the first yeah three episodes. Yeah. yeah it was three <clears throat> so I, I think it was like if anything at least an episode too long or they could have started like a where I, I just felt like with only 13 episodes that it it definitely we didn't need like a whole kind of like recap in a sense where he had to you know talk to her like this entire like with everything basically with the whole mission is and in a sense just just trying to get her on board because you know he's that's really the one person he had to work with mm-hmm. um so that part i i um i just thought it was i, I liked it but i just thought it, it lasted way too long mm-hmm. i also didn't care much for the the arc and like uh like the, the part with like uh um the AI committing suicide because I forgot what their reasoning was behind it, but I thought like of all the things that happened, like all the the um, the events that happened throughout like the thirteen episodes that, to prevent like this war, I thought that was almost like the weakest one um, because it re- really wasn't taking any kind of like, human life. In a sense, it was just kind of showing like AIs like have like the like they for some reason like they, they have like feelings in a sense where they would commit they would like need to commit suicide, mm-hmm. but I don't know how that would uh, really uh hurt like in a sense with ai because of this, was... the whole thing was with ai is because you know they become do they become too powerful or whatnot or they had too many rights or they didn't have uh, enough right i can't remember what exactly what it, it was, was basically but you would think like that... it was basically like um because like they were given they felt more human like they want to give like like that kind of like human rights extended to robots yeah, but that would prevent it but you, you think that would prevent it though because they would it... become they were they would be seen as more human i think the thinking was that like it gave them extra it overprotected the uh, AIs where like where they were more free to do I guess to hmm. advance okay. more and okay. I don't know. Yeah, I feel like it could be potentially like this mentality of like fear where you know that that balance oh. is starting to get out of sorts. Oh right. Okay. Of you know, humans are the top dog, AIs are kind of just subservient individuals to do more of the menial caretaking type tasks for humans. But and then when David's you see point him, now, now that you know you're seeing AIs get you know more rights, more things, and they're becoming more prevalent more human. in society. Yes, yeah. exactly. That that's kind of creating this fear. Um, and, and one other well, thing I know, could we didn't get your points yet, but one thing I just wanted to add in case that changes anything else that you guys had about this arc is that I did forget to mention that also in the altercation between Yugo and Diva, we get to learn more about Yugo's character and why he joined Tok and why he has this hate for AIs. And I'd be interested oh. to hear guys that because I thought this was a really weird like revelation oh, yeah, for him. That part. So we <laughs> yeah we basically get to learn that uh, Yugo is not a fan of AIs because when he was young he had a piano teacher who was an AI and that piano teacher's um, mission was to at least in Yugo's mind it should have been just to teach people how to play piano and stuff of that nature. But as we learn that one day, you know, when they're coming home from piano lessons or whatever, there's a huge accident that occurs on the freeway. And um, this AI piano teacher decides to go against his mission and save, you know, these these humans that are um, impacted by this this traffic accident. And essentially then what happens is that while the piano teacher is saving these humans, uh, the piano teacher dies. In, in the act of saving humans and in a weird twisted way yugo is very spiteful of that in the sense that he is very like i guess scornful that his piano his ai died trying to save others when he felt it should just be his because it was his piano teacher okay i don't know yeah. it was, like, that when was brought, so weird it was when, you bring, bad, up, when yeah. you bring it up that's all that's why i didn't like the the eagle part in this arc so much because that backstory too that's a big reason yeah. that that helps explain that a lot of why i did not like you in this arc so thanks for being up justin <laughs> yeah, yeah no apologies for forgetting that earlier yeah. <laughs> i think if there's one thing to learn from this arc is that people do a lot of things I guess I, I won't call that stupid, but they, they do very severe things that, that I guess we as an audience just won't understand. And it's just how they deal with the cope. Uh, I guess whenever someone goes through major shock, uh, their their system or their body responds to it in some way that helps them. Uh, with with Vivi, it goes into her becoming diva. Uh, with Hugo, it's him becoming an AI and 
just hating all AIs, I guess. Uh, so I guess that's just one thing that we have to learn from this arc. We may not like, we may not like it, we may not understand it, but that's just how it goes. And uh, I want to say with David, I think I don't think that this arc in particular was stupid. I think it just goes to show that you know, as Vivi goes through all these uh, emotional uh, like events, uh, she's just dealing with it the best that she can, and it just goes to show that you know, even for an AI uh, with with this specific model, when it becomes too much, this is just how she deals with it. And then now we're trying to figure out how she grows or, you know, uh, learn from these incidents and become a stronger person. So overall, I think it's still a meaningful arc, uh, although we may not like it or uh, agree with it. I think it is very important to show how she grows up and becomes uh, the Vivi that saves the future, right? Yeah. Well, no, so, elements ahead, elements were important, but at the same time, I just felt like because uh, remember this, this entire time, it's a different Vivi. It's not like the the one that we know or we're we're used to. It That's is, but I, it's, but but it goes to show, like you know, if she really was just a machine, right, just an AI, this yeah. is what she would have been, right? Uh, like it, nothing would impact her. She would just still do her job, her mission to become the number one. Uh, like idol in the world or songstress in the world and you know complete her mission of making everyone smile with her singing yeah uh but you know like i said the, the point of vivi being vivi is that uh she is trying to become like the first ai to understand and become human herself so uh yeah. this this is what happens to humans right they just yeah. they can't do everything and be perfect all the time so mm -hmm. yeah no, the message was good. I just wish it was just one episode less because we had very limited time <laughs> where we find out that a lot of things got rushed towards yeah, the end. Yeah, they, they definitely had to we'll cram a lot of stuff, yep. for sure. Um, and yeah, just a final point, too, to Ku's point, you know, again, from Ophelia's standpoint, with kind of the evolution of the diva model or the sisters, if you will, um, mm -hmm. I'm now remembering, too, like the main reason that uh, Ophelia decided to commit suicide you know earlier was that she could not cope with her mission of becoming you know a great right a uh, great right. songstress yeah. yep. um so it's interesting to your point you know we're again not only from vivi's eyes seeing the development of her own humanity in a way but we're mm -hmm. also seeing the humanity of you know all of her descendants also taking more and more human-like traits where right. you know what we would expect is you know you're an ai you're there to serve out your mission and and antonio is that really great uh, example of he is acting like an AI to the very end, whereas Ophelia mm -hmm. was more human. Oh, which I want story. to bring up as as well, right? If if an AI is is able to go through with the process of suicide, you know, AIs are meant to be perfect. They're supposed to be logical, right? So suicide, it's it's considered a a uh, a long term solution to a short term problem. Mm -hmm. So suicide should never be an option or a logical, uh, uh, what's, what's the word? It should never become like a, uh, like a step for them to take for them to mm -hmm. solve their problems in a sense. So I think that's what shocked the world, right? If an AI can commit suicide, what are we doing as humans? There has to be something that we're doing wrong yeah. or something that we have yep. to rethink. Yeah. Uh, so I think that's why it caused such a big shock. Uh, to the world and cause them to go one step towards the the calamity that is you know skynet right ai <laughs> yeah. takes over the world yeah so yeah uh yeah I, I feel like this is a very impactful arc uh and there's a lot of like deep meanings but i i personally uh felt like it was um it was a little stale i guess i didn't really like how they uh they uh uh sh showcased it to us i guess yeah, it's yeah. definitely messy, for yeah. for lack of a better word, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. So, okay. Oh, for that. We're getting into the final stretch here. So two more arcs. Yes. So yes. now we've had all these series of events happening at this music festival. And what happens post this point is not as large of a... This is only a, a five-year skip from the events of uh, Ophelia and everyone. But essentially what starts at the beginning of this new arc, which we'll call the museum arc, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, essentially what has happened is that um, because, you know, Ophelia's suicide was prevented, 
Um, there wasn't, you know, any escalation, like, once again, in, in the relationship between humans and AI. And so um, from Vivi and Matsumoto's standpoint, Matsumoto was, one, still at least on his mission to figure out what this technology was that, that Yugo had obtained to bring back Vivi's memories. But from Vivi's standpoint, she kind of just decommissioned herself and and finds herself you know at the start of this new arc um being in a museum where she is you know being showcased as the once again first fully autonomous ai the og and, exactly <laughs> and so um essentially what happens here is um vivi is in this museum as well because you have to remember with yugo's virus that he uploaded into her um she for she forgets basically everything about diva she is now vivi once again so one of the the key things to call it there is that um this concept of diva was retired because she had lost her voice because you have to remember you know vivi is not diva vivi is the one who is more kind of action oriented going and and saving you know humanity from this hundred year plot she's not diva she's not this ai that has this this mission per se of making everybody happy through singing um and so what we'll learn, though, is that because Vivi is not D.Va in a sense from that mission perspective, uh, she does gain back kind of that mission in a sense through the visit of this um, young boy who is like fascinated with Vivi or D.Va. And, you know, throughout the years is consistently the one individual that is coming back and basically really being a companion for Vivi. Um, you know, Matsumoto's off doing his own thing. Nobody else really kind of has this attachment to Vivi at this point. So to have, you know, this this human have that interaction with her and and be, I think, as they were also saying, her only his only friend um, because he didn't really get along with, you know, the other kids at school and everything um, that brings back, you know, even more kind of humanity for Vivi and, and more so um, that interest in picking up songwriting again. And so. Some of the really big things here is that um, Vivi decides to set out on this effort to write a song. And one of the really big things is that this young child that we're, that we're introduced to and, and throughout the years that Vivi gets to see him grow while she's working on this song is that it all leads up to this reveal that the young boy is actually the human Matsumoto. Oh, um, who has been responsible oh, for, for kicking yeah. off all the events <laughs> in, in motion here. And so I know a lot of us as we talk later, like that was a super hype moment. Yeah. But um, <laughs> with, with that said, you know, we again get this in, this insight into the fragility of human life because while Vivi is, is working um, on this song, you know, she's seeing Matsumoto grow throughout his adolescence into adulthood, getting married, um, I think even, you know, he sees like the experiencing part. loss. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. He gets to see the loss of, of Matsumoto's. Um, I can't remember. Did he lose both his wife and he child? He lost his wife and yep. child. Yeah. And child. Yep. So just a lot of brutal things that, you know, yep. are, again, are adding to these human elements of Vivi's kind of experience throughout these hundred years. Um, and the, the one big thing, too, to that point of all these, you know, um, human growth elements that that Ma the human Matsumoto shows to Vivi is that Vivi learns the the concept of heart what it means to have these emotions and everything and, and that actually ends up being the one last key piece that allows her to finish writing this song um, which is something that has never been able to be done by an AI in the past to create something completely original. That's something that, you know, it's always kind of been this ideology that that's a human trait. That's not something that an AI should be able to incorporate into, you know, the mission that is set out for them. Mm -hmm. um, and so while it seems to us that, you know, that's kind of ending on a somber or somewhat happy point to see Diva kind of come to this growth yet again, that all gets ripped away with us at the very end uh, of this arc where um, Vivi thinks, you know, she's completed this song. She's become, you know, more and more closer to what a blurred line between AI and human should look like and wakes up in the future to find that all of the AIs that have gone on a rampage are singing this song that she has completed. And yeah. so we get that. Ah, shit. We tried stuff still fucked up and so with that what were you guys thoughts on on this much shorter yeah, okay. part but tightly first, focused first, I, just, I just gotta say i really like this this one episode arc bothered me the most 
because we don't know why like Matsumoto as a child like fell in love with Vivi and couldn't stop staring at her and became her best friend throughout the years. Like I really wish mm-hmm. they would have kind of fleshed out the backstory of Matsumoto of why and how he became like what he is. Well, the Maybe whole thing is, like, we could have taken some time from the last arc and see it for this arc then. <laughs> Well, the I mean, like, I don't think just, so, no. Justin kind of mentioned it, where it was just that like, he was just a kid that was kind of by himself, had no friends, and just like had kind of like that attachment or fascination with AI. And then just kind of, uh, and then, you know, basically walked up to Vivi, and then they just kind of started talking. Yeah, yeah. they just hit it off. I and I, I get that, but I really wish they would have fleshed it out more, you know? But Give us a, more of a backstory. But you're a kid, man. You know, kids just basically just, they just latch on to certain things, you know? They, he was know. the only kid in a museum where tons of kids come by, by the way, to look at all these AIs and machines and, you know, like like creatures of the past. But, but he's, he's the one that had fascinations with it. And basically, you know, he grew hey, up to have he was great really, things for AI. He was, really, he was really, really into retro track tech back then. Yeah, from, uh, back then, a man of true taste. But, you know, but what I was gonna mention that basically, like this kind of resolution was uh, Justin kind of called it. I don't know how far back about how um, the events would be kind of in a in a sense Vivi's fault mm. of uh, yeah. you know what what happened. I um, uh, I just I also I, I want to say about that part. I I, I, I need we need I want to bring up too because we forgot to mention how um we already mentioned about the uh, the archive how um Vivi sometimes she connects to this other AI. Called the archive it's and it's kind of represented by her in a classroom i guess i don't really know how to describe it it's just, it's just like this other Granite. Granite. so i uh, i don't even know if it's like if it's connected to every ai or just like it's just like this central ai that she can connect to i'm not really sure Bro, how it works, but like, but I'm, like I'm assuming it's just it's her connecting to the internet or the main yeah. server so yeah, it's, it's like, her it's like a home computer essentially yeah. okay but like but connected we, to the larger we, server we, we, we see it Throughout the series, like she's like constantly going into this classroom that's supposed to represent like the archive, and so and so that part with uh-huh. like with uh when the old diva um when she got wiped out, like she basically disappeared, and then this BV came back in the in like the cl- in the, the classroom. So like this this happens like throughout the series, and so I figured we should brought that up because it's gonna be important later for uh, the last part. Truth. Yeah, and I'm, gl- I'm glad you brought that up because again, there's so many small details here that that are easy to kind of gloss over in in the larger scheme of things. But no, directly to your point, that actually is another big piece of you know, Vivi's involvement in the archive, where Diva is still there in like a fragmented sense, and Diva also helps Vivi complete this song. Yeah, yeah. And, and she was like she was like in there during this whole time while like the whole um AI was going on. Basically, that's why she wasn't aware until like the last second. Yep. Yeah. But I guess I'll say for my thoughts, like the ending of I mean, I really enjoyed this this episode. Like like just seeing like Matsumoto's like even form, just like seeing that was really good for me. And then that that ending too, it because I was like I was just basically down on this series. Like I wasn't really wasn't really feeling the last two arcs, but then this the ending bringing it back, like it brought back the tension and like it really like made me like like it got me excited again, just thinking, okay, how are they gonna resolve this? Like what what's like like, 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 you know, shit is real now. So, what, what are we gonna do? So, I that's, that's that's that that moment just hit me right there. So, it brought me back to the excitement that I was missing from the series. Yeah, I would I would definitely agree with that. It was definitely a big uh, moment that pulled me back into reaching and 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 getting to the climax of of the series for sure. Um, perfect. Well, then we will transition into the final arc or the final three episodes that lead us into the end of of vivi's story if you will um okay so what happens here now you know vivi's woken up she realizes all these ais that are going berserk are singing her song um matsumoto shows up shortly after and is like okay what the hell's going on like we we got to figure stuff out and so um i can't remember fully the specifics if you know while vivi was in the museum and, and spending these years with the human matsumoto that Matsumoto, you know, found some additional information of, of what they could do as far as next steps go. But essentially what, what does happen, at least from my notes here, is that um, they basically learn that um, Matsumoto himself is also a member of Toke, I guess. In, in some weird way, you know, everybody gets a free <laughs> Toke membership card. Maybe they're having special, you know, <laughs> buy one, get one free over all these years. But um, essentially, you know, with that revelation, um, when the AI Matsumoto or the cube Matsumoto and uh, Vivi 
go and meet the human Matsumoto, one, they save him from what we see in the very first episode where he is, as David put it, you know, just hitting his hands on the keyboard to uh to send the ai matsumoto <laughs> back in time <laughs> they 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 interject and they save the human matsumoto from that event and through kind of you know those efforts um the human matsumoto takes them to the true leader of toke who again tying in all these concepts of these characters that are related the leader of toke now at the current time at the end of these hundred years is Yui Kakatani, who is the granddaughter of Yugo. Um, and of course, another thing is that Yui's number one, like, um, right hand man or right hand woman in this sense is Elizabeth or a, a new version of Elizabeth that's been carried along throughout these years. Um, I don't think, you know, it was the same Elizabeth from the sunrise since I'm pretty sure they both burned up, but they just continue to have Elizabeths for whatever reason because, you know, logic. Wasn't that it, relationship was, between wasn't Kakatani? It, um... So they, 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 like, if, yeah, was there a reason? I can't remember. Wasn't like they, like, was. didn't, she, didn't she survive? Like, she was just like in pieces and then the Tulk just, no. just rebuilt her? Or what was it? What was it, Ku? You got the nuggets here. Uh, uh, so apparently there was a backup of her memory that they installed oh, into a right. new model. And then I guess since uh, her original, uh, the original Elizabeth's uh, mission was to serve her master in a sense, uh, they decided to use her to protect. The new leader of Toke, in a sense. So, oh, okay. And it just happened to be Elizabeth for some reason, I guess. Right? <laughs> Convenient. Got to right. keep characters that you know the viewers have been familiar with over over these episodes so yes. far. Yes. Um. So so those are all things, and then you know to add kind of further um fuel to the fire, we we finally learn the true reason of why the AIs are going berserk, and so. To all our points, all our um, kind of jokes at the sense that this really is kind of like a Terminator, iRobot, cliche kind of story. The real reason that the AIs decide to go berserk is because of the archive. The archive itself ends up being a rogue AI that decides that, you know, humanity has kind of reached the end of its evolution cycle. And the true path moving forward is actually the evolution of AIs. So... Now we have that kind of, you know, big drop, albeit at a bit of a cliche, you know, kind of used method of, of course, you know, this, the main system that's responsible for everything. It has, you know, these grandiose ideas of what it thinks evolution should look like. One thing um, quick, Justin, about that, yes, like, uh, the, 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 the thing with the Skynet, the, but they kind of like made them realize like all this stuff was because of Ivy's song. Um, mm hmm. And sorry, I just wanted to point that out. Oh, very, very good point. Sorry. Exactly. <laughs> the, all these things are, are adding into the the revelations of, of what actually yes, has yes. gone to lead to this hundred years of all these efforts of these characters. Yep. And so um what then happens is that Vivi decides to go and meet the archive. Um and, and through those events, like like we just said, you know, we, we learn why the archive is doing what it's doing, but the real kicker is is that the Archive has this level of respect for Vivi because as Vivi has taken all these events, she is the one AI that really has come closest to being a human, essentially. And so recognizing that Vivi is an exception to what the Archive believes AI's evolution should look like, the uh, Archive give Viv gives Vivi a choice that if she is able to sing her song for all of these people to show, you know, this evolution of AI and humanity, the archive will stop with its, you know, quote unquote, evil path towards the destruction of all humanity. And so with that, you know, as, as a viewer, we're all thinking like, hey, this, this should be easy. Like, Vivi, you, you've done all these things and tried to save all these people throughout all these years. Like, just sing your song. Like, you can do this. <laughs> and, and, and unfortunately, when it comes down to it, Vivi can't do it. She yeah. has a complete breakdown. She's not able to, you know, even with all these events that she's accumulated over these years, all these people that she saved or she was unable to save, she can't do it. One of the things we probably should mention, too, when she was writing the song, I think this was during the entire time, too, where she couldn't sing or where she wasn't singing or for some mm. reason she couldn't do any of that. So we should probably also mention that part where, like, for, like, the whole thing of, like, 40-plus some you know, plus years, she wasn't able to sing. Yeah. No, so. definitely. And so now, you know, we, we have yet again another thing that is ceasing us from getting our, our happy ending, if you will. Yep. And so I'll oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? 
Oh, no, I said yep. Yeah. Oh, you just... said cool, cool, cool. Yeah. No worries. <laughs> yep, yep, indeed. So, um, what then happens due to Vivi's inability to sing songs? And I, I know David was a fan of this part. Is that uh, the archives? Like, well, okay, you can't do it. You must not really care for humans. I'm gonna drop a bunch of satellites onto humanity. And so while that's happening, you know, Divi, uh, Divi, Divi again. again. There we go. Divi, <laughs> Divi <laughs> is having just a complete breakdown. She feels, you know, the ultimate failure. Um, she connects on, on a call with Matsumoto and saying how, you know, we failed everything that we've done. You know, it's it's all my fault. I couldn't be, you know, the, the savior for, for both AIs and humans. And Matsumoto, you know, comes in hot with his trump card and said, ah, oh, we had a feeling that this might happen, Vivi. And because this happens, we can actually send you back in time one more time. <laughs> and so that is is what occurs. You know, of course, you get you got to have your plot armor, your Reserve. trump card, whatever you want it to be. Exactly. <laughs> the things that can make you do it just one more time, one more time. That's all you need. And so they end up taking, you know, that solution. Vivi gets brought back to... Um, when she first awakens and, and realizes, you know, that, that the AIs are singing her song. And now with all this information that she's accumulated of the archive being the main reason uh, for the downfall of everything, she kind of gives updated information to um, Toke and to Matsumoto and everyone so that they can go and stop what, what, what is going to occur here. Um, and so with that, um, Let's see here. I just want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Um, so Toke, with this updated information from Vivi, they actually go and form an assault on um, Arayashiki Tower, which is where the Archives main server is housed. Um, but of course, the Archives, you know, no idiot. It's been kind of the Skynet, <laughs> of you will, of all these AIs. It actually sets this up as a trap. And um, in that instance... Vivi actually, you know, realizes that everybody's being killed. And as as these things are kind of coming to its point, um, all of these individuals are still showing this, uh, I guess, reliance upon Vivi. They're giving her the strength that she needs to sing these songs that she previously wasn't able um, to do before that. And so um, with, you know, kind of now all of these events that she's accumulated, the support from Matsumoto of being sent back in time one last time, she finally returns to where it all began for us with the story of Vivi. She returns to the stage in Nia Land, um, where, you know, when we first got introduced, she had nobody, you know, there. Nobody was really interested in her. And she's finally able to sing this very impactful, very emotion-felt song of all the events that she's gone through to bridge, you know, the, the gap between AIs and humans. And so she's able to sing this song. They have a very nice, you know, montage, very beautifully orchestrated song and everything. Um, and with that, we, we get our happy ending. Vivi has stopped the archive from, from, you know, it, it's thoughts of evolution and stuff. And now humans and AIs are, are good. And the one caveat though, is that, as a result of her singing her song, and I think I forgot to mention this, you know, first when the archive was having the conversation with Vivi, is that as a result of singing this song, the song would shut down all AIs, including Vivi herself. So it, it kind of just adds further to the weight of this decision that had to be made. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, self, self-sacrifice as a concept is something that's commonly used. And for uh, this tragic character and in, in soul heroine in Vivi, it, it makes sense that this is kind of the the peak decision that would have to be made and, and why he would make this decision. But um, with that, even though we think at this point that, you know, all of the AIs have been sacrificed and Vivi made the largest sacrifice that she could, um, we see in the final scenes that Vivi has actually been either rebuilt or been salvaged by humans, and she is actually still alive. And whether or not she's retained any of these memories... I think that's the one thing that in the final scenes of this series, it's left up to the interpretation of the viewer. And then that's what brings us to an end of Vivi, Fluoride Eyes songs. Yeah. I actually <laughs> don't remember that ending at all. I, no, I don't remember anything that what? happened after she destroyed God. all the AIs. I, it's, been a, man, it's been a while since Ooh. I've seen the endings. I, I, didn't remember, a couple months, yeah. I didn't remember any of this. Oh my God. So oh. with all that then, what were your guys' thoughts leading up to this ending and 
having a, a, a happy ending Dude, of sorts. Like you, well, you, I will always take the happy ending at Ro- Roots. Uh. <laughs> I mean, you brought it up there, Justin. The whole, like, do the... the t- redo the time travel like one more time again and it's specifically to like that it's specifically to the point where um the areas are rampaging it's not it's not hey let's just go back to again before all this 100 years back and just try to redo all this again it's no no we gotta pick a really bad spot to time travel back <laughs> it's like yeah i did not like that <laughs> mm-hmm. well I, th- I think for that i mean they they were able to change a bunch of stuff that you know in the like the benefit of uh having a not go crazy so yeah, i think yeah, so really the, 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 you're still cutting close, that though. Moment, though. You're still cutting yeah, close. I mean, all I, she really had to do was sing. That's the only thing yeah. she they she basically fell at. Uh, I think if anything, the one thing that we can probably agree on is that the concept of time travel or the ability to redo events Re-zero. gives a yeah re zero exactly and ties into you know the yeah. the uh, the author being a part of this project. Yep. It gives it gives a lot of outs at the end of the day for for better and for worse either you can take it a very dark route where you keep the time travel very restrictive and sorts um i think something that would be a really good comparison is like if you take the series steins gate for example i think that would be something to take a deeper look at of how to use the method of time travel in a effective way quote unquote hmm. um Not for you know, don't get me wrong steins gate definitely has its its um you know, points as well that were more conveniences at the end of the day. But no, I, I totally get kind of the um, frustrations that can be had with like the the outs that time travel gives. I mean, it's not so, like they really yeah. gave it, gave an explanation of too why it basically has to be at that point. Like if there was like any restriction in the technology that couldn't let them go back further, give them more leeway. It, just, mm-hmm. it, just, it just felt like just for the dramatic purposes of like, let's go back to this for this really like, I don't know. This part, I don't know. That's for, just, that's for me, part. I, for me, I thought, like, the, or at least, like, this final arc, I thought they really did, like, what they could with the time constraints, uh, in, in a sense, where I, I think we've all seen anime, especially original anime, who have had just a shit show of an ending, um, Wonder Egg Priority. <laughs> uh, I was mention that. Um, where I, I felt like, Besides, like the kind of like the last second thing, where it's just like, oh, you know, we we, we can just send you back in time right before this moment, so you get another, you know, you get you get like another mulligan. again. You know, like it could have, I think it could have been just way way worse. I actually thought like it, um, what would have been the worst thing is if they just would have sent her way back to the beginning, and how they just like let's just say they would have ended it at the point where she's just beginning the timeline again. I thought like you, like where it, it would have just felt like nothing changed. What was the point of everything? And yeah. then you're just you're just going through everything again. And uh, so I think with, with they cut when they cut uh, back at the point where all she had to do was just sing. <laughs> That's the only thing I think she had to do. So I, I, I felt like that was that was fine. Um, but I, I mean, really, like I, I still wish they would have had like uh, more time to just kind of like go through like the details. Uh, but it, but in the end, with it being like an anime original, I honestly was fine with this. <laughs> I, I was just expecting. I mean, I've, I've been just used to expecting the worst for endings. Mm. So, what about you, Ku? What do you think? Coming to a conclusion here. So, with everything that's happened, like I said, time constraints, and you know what, like whatever Stratton and David said, it could have been a lot worse. Uh, the twelfth episode gave me hope that it was going to be a very interesting and uh, satisfying ending. And uh, but the way that the end of the series, I guess I was okay with it. It could have been a lot worse for sure. Um, but like they all mentioned, uh, not very much was explained about the the time traveling aspect. Uh, you know, definitely they could have traveled to a different point in time. I mean, they still could have saved Matsumoto, but they choose to let him die still. And it's it's <laughs> it's very convoluted. And I feel like they just they were just rushing too much to to just finish the series. So I think that was very disappointing. Uh, but I mean, in the end, with what you got, it, it wasn't that bad, right? Uh, it wasn't that bad of an ending. It, it's nice to see the uh, the self sacrifice of the hero and the fact that like all's well that ends well. You know, I I personally hate the the all's well that ends well uh, endings, but I mean, I, I guess that's just me. I've seen too many Not movies. Me. <laughs> I want I want something different, but it, it was okay. I mean, I don't mind it if it made sense, but yeah, that what that's not what happened here, so. Yeah, lots, yeah. lots, lots do, of plot holes. Do you think with that, you right. know, with those things of like saying that 
the plot holes and and the the limitations that they had with the number of episodes that they did have you know safe for argument's sake if they were given like a 24 episode like full full season of content to work with do you think that would change anything or do you think yes. you know based on what we know it would just add more arcs essentially like more two three episode arcs mm. and then we're just getting more characters that we may not care for at the end of the day because we only get such limited experience with i them. think it would have increased the quality i don't know if it would be like staying out or it'd be like a top tier show but definitely would have increased the quality because it sounded like there are so much things they want to tell but they couldn't so mm -hmm. i think having more episodes Fair. would have been would have been good I think I think the show definitely deserved twenty four episodes, and it definitely would have done a lot more justice. Like yeah. I, I I would rate this a lot higher. I like I'm very confident that if they gave it twenty four episodes and gave like the the studio time to actually like flesh out the story and tell it how they would want to, it it would definitely be rated like top tier for sure. I I actually disagree with twenty four episodes. The only reason no. why is the only reason why is because of. Uh, Matsumoto only came during the points where it actually mattered in time, like in those 100 and then there's 100 years because he would mm -hmm. only show up when like those events were close to taking place. And then besides that, everything was normal. Everything was the same. Mm -hmm. And there was like really no change. So really, all we would have been saying is almost like daily life slash life episodes, I think, where uh, I, for I the disagree. most part, but I don't think but so. but if there were a few more episodes, they could have at least fleshed out the details of the previous episodes with like the loops where we felt like it was just too rushed. They could have gotten more into detail, but I think 24 episodes would have been too much. I, I disagree. I would I, have to disagree with that. Yeah. Okay, I, how so? Because... Uh, so you guys want to see slice of life? Okay. No, no. Well, I, don't I, think it would be I, more so that. I, I think almost it would be, I'll meet you guys in the middle. You know, I would say 24 is definitely a lot and i i don't agree with your point certain that they would be just filled with more slice of life things i think <laughs> the main focus would be the expansion of like lore and concepts within this world that were just kind of quickly just thrown in our face and just you know something that we had to accept due to the the rate that things were moving but um the one thing about that like i guess how would you think that they would give us those details then because i, I guess it would it would almost feel like it would be like a um almost a recap episode in a sense of like if they were going to give us that information okay because i got the... you i got you all right no okay so so two more episodes in the museum mark we get matsumoto's story like we get to see how he develops as a person right I because if you really perfect so. no if you, if you really think about it this isn't just about vivi even though it is her show right fluoride eye song it's all about her you know you gotta give some kind of you know like um like some kind of props to the the partner, right? Which is Matsumoto. Like what what made him the way he was? I think he deserved maybe at least three episodes to kind of give his backstory and kind of make him shine more as a as as the partner of Vivi. And then from there, you have like what, say nine episodes to work with now. So now you have four episodes or five episodes to work out the failure of the future, right? Even after all that they did. You know, the, uh, you know, Skynet still took over the world and, you know, like AI still like rebelled against the like human creators. But with this, you kind of get more of a fleshed out story. You get to explore more about like who is um, like Yugo's granddaughter. How does she come into power? Like, why does she change her mind to side with the AIs rather than fight against them? And then, uh, you know, of course, you know, they all fail anyways. You know, Vivi can't sing. And then instead of like getting one episode to, you know, oh, I can finally sing now. Let me just, you know, sacrifice myself and, you know, save the world. You get like four episodes to have a more like satisfying ending uh, play out. Right. And then mm -hmm. it could have gone in a totally different way, I think. And like me, I really wish that they would have played out the ending a lot more differently. But, you know, again, that's just my personal bias. But I feel like even then, like with this ending, I was still okay with it. But it still would have made me happier if they actually like gave us reasons as to uh, how things came to be the way they are, right? I, I think the I one see, thing. Oh, God, sorry. I, I was gonna say I honestly think like if it were twenty four episodes, I feel like one of our complaints would be how slow it's moving, because uh, a lot of it is just it would be just a bunch of lore drops, where I just feel like it would be, where it would just be it would feel like almost like nothing's happening, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I I don't know. I just I would have liked more episodes, but I just think 24 would have been too much. Yeah, so that's what I was saying. I, I think somewhere maybe in the middle, I know that'd be like a really weird episode 20? count, but... To eternity. Yeah, could go that route. <laughs> um, 
but but to Ku's point too, I, I agree with all those specific moments that things could have been you know flushed out a little bit more and given more um, context and more kind of weight to us as a viewer. The one thing that um, I, I wanted to mention as you were talking about all those is um, we didn't really get much insight into the creator of Vivi. I think we got one that flashback. Too. That's where the we one got thing I really oh, The yeah. doctor, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah we got to sure. see her uh, face. Part, and it was just like, you're just like, oh, hey, Vivi, your mission is to make people happy through singing. And then they just completely write it out. And it's like, that, that's okay, wait, right there what, what facility does this doctor work at? Why is yeah. she, you know, the middle know. doctor? Yeah. Like, you know, why did she create Vivi in the way that she created Vivi? So that those are things that I think definitely could have added, like, an episode or, or two to really yeah. initialize why the, vivi is so important because it was literally like a one I two also, minute scene it was just like okay the, the one thing that kind of sucked about the show is that everything was kind of seen through vivi like vivi's eyes in it but we didn't really see much that was like outside of, of like what vivi was really seeing well which, again uh, again that, that's it's all being sucks. delivered through matsumoto like he's just here matsumoto, like matsumoto, matsumoto is just showing up when shit hits the fan and then he's just yeah. like okay hey vivi yeah this is what's happening Yep, yeah, go. So like, it would have been but, better to see, hey, Matsumoto, what the hell are you doing this whole time? But yeah, that, 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 that brings, that's true too. That brings yeah. it to Ku's point. It's like, yeah, we had more episodes. Like, the yeah. show was focused yeah, so much on TV. You had more episodes. You could do spin-off series. We could do Matsumoto more. Matsumoto spin-off series. You could, oh, could, that, now, that would be a slice of life <laughs> no. right, if they did a yeah. spin-off, all right? <laughs> this guy. Yeah, I also, I also want to add to... You get to see Matsumoto to... raising his family. Sorry, David. Yes. No, I want to add to, like, we need more lore on the archive because it was such an important part of that ending, and we... We see, like, you know, just a glimpse of it throughout the series, but, like, um, they, they, they need to go more in detail of what this archive is and how it's all set up and how it's connected to all the, the AI and stuff. So, so yeah, so stuff about Matsumoto, like, the V's creator and the archive, we could have, and even, like, more stuff about, like, Tope, too, about, like, when, like, Elizabeth, like, got mm-hmm. backed up after the, the Space Hotel, like, that could have been a good part, too. So it's like, we had all this extra stuff that, you could add it in, and if you did all that, I think it would have been a much better series. David, there, there actually was more about the archive. There were, uh, there was an in Terminator one, two, and three. Yes. Oh, all these oh, movies before were set up. That's 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 in my final okay. that's, that's that's in my final uh, thoughts. But are we? No, but it... but in, in, in all seriousness, though, like to back David's point, like because it was so rushed and there wasn't any explanation to the archive and their backstory we just assume it's the terminator right like it's skynet yeah. but if you if you give us time to kind of learn of a character even even their their villain you can kind of help figure out what makes them unique and what makes them like which way, which way them like the way they were for the story you know it would have made it a lot more different and uh, i i think we would probably care a little bit more if we yeah. actually uh, got more context, like so, there's there's so much yeah. more we can add that wasn't that won't be slice of life, and it wouldn't slow down the pacing. I think it would have like, yeah, I think it would too have much been, slower though. No, no, too no. much slower when there, characters you can just wrap up with one episode. No, no, I, I, I disagree. Don't think so. I disagree. Oh god. So god. I would say you know we we all have these valid things that we would have liked to be done different. Although, although the I don't, criticisms that we have, I don't with think the that show. Uh, that that backstory with the the. Uh, Hugo's like AI teacher. I don't think that can be saved. That's that's a lost cause. Yeah, but, that's pretty rough. That's but, one of those things. Everything where else, the logic just kind of is, is forced down your throat as if you were like, you're gonna take this and you're gonna like it. Just luckily, it was it. brief right. though. Like it was like half an yeah. episode, yeah. and I and I knew enough of what I needed to know of Hugo. It was like basically oh. like five minutes. We found out about the character and moving on. Yeah. With all that uh, said, I, I know we've kind of gone into a very detailed discussion of all the different arcs we've in a way kind of talked about what we would have liked to see different with the shows. Um, I know certain you have covered kind of the, the moment for you that you really enjoyed was the reveal of um, the human Matsumoto. I actually and, and didn't again, say much about that. Oh, uh, well, I, we, 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 we go deeper then. I was just trying to <laughs> see, cause I felt like, you know, with the things that we were going to plan to talk about next here was that we, we have covered a lot of those and, and I wanted to get more so to the, to the point of, you know, kind of final thoughts. So that can kind of yeah. all encompass like, just quickly, you know, favorite moment because I think we've gone very in depth so right now into yeah. the criticisms that we had. Um, yeah. So I would just say favorite moment for you guys, and then at the end of the day, is this a show that you would feel, you know, comfortable? I guess recommending to somebody does uh, it stand out enough to do so? I would actually, I would say yes, just because it seemed like a majority of the people like this, even though uh, the concept really wasn't anything you know, like new um it's a uh, for me my favorite my favorite like moment in episode was just episode 10 
uh, was with the whole thing with uh, the Matsumoto name and drop, just like just watching him kind of uh, grow as a character, just with just kind of like, like how quick in a sense, like life can go where, and then things just change for that guy where he was just like, kind of, where he was just a kid uh, that was by himself. He wasn't really making friends, but just kind of constantly show up to this museum, uh, talk with Vivi. And then you just kind of see him just growing up where you would see, you see him actually having more friends and all of a sudden a wife than a kid and then no wife, but with the kid and all of a sudden then just him. And then it was just like that whole thing. It was just like the progression of that. It was just, I thought like everything about it was just really good. And I thought, like, and then, and then just uh, top it off with the whole um, kind of like reveal. I thought it was just, just well done. Yeah. Um, that was definitely a, a high point for me as well. Yep. Um, I mean, a high point for me is just the fight choreography is for the best part of this series for me. Like, and just like the animation around all that. Like, this is what, uh, the show benefit the most from having Wit Studios as its production. So like just so like like the you know Elizabeth Firth is uh, VV fight for me is like the one that stands out just because like because I know like there's a scene in like the metal floats like arc two where she was like doing all this stuff against like the the AI that were in rampage. There's like I guess there's cool animation in that. Oh but it didn't yeah, much, I forgot. It when didn't really, like transforms into like the plane or whatever. And he had all of, he had all <laughs> yeah. of these little like swarms of like mini robots. <laughs> but like I mean, it was cool animation, but it didn't really make much mm-hmm. sense to me. So I felt the fight scene with like with like Elizabeth and VV was like it stood out just because like it it was just a stand out for me in general. And then just having the animation and just and like the space the space scenes and like the sp- animations around there like those those are really good for me. Like I really enjoy that animation. So. Um, if I was to recommend this, so uh, it's I I say it's like the same thing for me when I said about Hige, Hige Hero, about how if you're like an uh, like an anime veteran, you've been watching anime for a while, and you need something different, then sure I recommend this to you because like just see I mean I think I think you would let me see like I, I recommend you give, I, I recommend you give it a shot just to see how it is and see your thoughts. If you don't enjoy it, then feel free to drop it. But if you do enjoy it, then see get through the end and see what your thoughts are. So. If you're like if you're an anime veteran and you're looking for something different, if you're like still kind of new to anime and like you're like not sure like what what the meme's about and you you really need like the top tier stuff to help get started, then I would not recommend this to you. I think you would like get really confused and like again you you'd be confused on like well not confused I guess because it has a lot of similarities to like I guess Terminator, but like like you wouldn't you still like you don't understand what anime all is all about really then so like. So I guess hmm. if you're if you're newer, I recommend like more of the, the try and true sci-fi, which I don't really know, which is besides Cowboy Bebop, there's Cowboy Bebop, and I guess like next shows like like even Galleon. Yeah, but... only I wouldn't be like psychopaths in that vein, but yeah, I mean, I, 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 re- like, I, re- re- I recommend I'd rather recommend Psychopaths than VV. So I would give it the first four episodes. If you don't like it, you're not gonna yeah. like it. Yeah, I mean, I I would have to kind of disagree though. I would actually recommend this to anyone that would want a new anime series to watch. Um, like I said, I feel like the beginning definitely draws you in. It definitely showcases what Vivi has to offer, right? And you know, fight scenes were amazing, uh, very smooth, very beautiful. Uh, the music, you know, like the OP. I actually hated the OP uh, from the, from the get go because <laughs> I'm not a big fan of like. Uh, English, terrible. like <laughs> as you like my pleasure, like what the what does that even yeah, mean? Definitely right? a weird, weird but then, statement to have. Yeah, but then when you get to an actual like song, right? You start singing in Japanese, like yeah, it's it like it, it kind of slaps, you know. This and then America. like after after a few episodes, I mean, like like I said, like after a few episodes, it kind of grows on you in a sense, you know. Like like I said, I hated that at first, but I guess after a while, it just kind of grew on me. And you know, she is kind of cute, so I kept watching the old people. Right? <laughs> oh, what, what what can I say? But uh, yeah, like I said, it's I'd, I'd say uh, I would recommend to anyone that's watching that would want a new series to watch. Uh, mm-hmm. It definitely has a lot to offer. Uh, it can get very deep, can get very convoluted. And, you know, if you're an older person that that seemed a Terminator or like iRobot or whatever, it, it will become very similar to you. Like you can kind of expect what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, overall, it wasn't it wasn't that bad of a story. So, yeah, yeah. No, I, I kind of agree with you in terms of like the whether or not I would recommend this show. I'm, I'm in the mindset of I would actually recommend this to people who are newer to anime because I, th- I feel like the one thing that, you know, is really hard to get out of 
the hype that was built around this the creation of this series was the fact that you have Wit Studio and the author of ReZero. You know, more so veterans of anime and know kind of the weight that those names bring or what kind of, you know, things that make them stand out. It almost in a weird way, I feel like kind of tweaks your assessment of the series because these things are always kind of in the back of your head. Whereas if you're a new viewer and you don't know about Wit Studio, you don't know about ReZero and all these things. I feel like with that, because you don't have this bar of expectations and maybe, you know, you're not as um well known with kind of the cliches that come with like the terminators and irobots i think it could be a very enjoyable experience and have kind of these twists that you know you wouldn't be expecting Mm -hmm. and something that wouldn't be more tiring to those that are more well versed in these type of genres and stories if that makes sense um so that that would be just you know my my recommendation standpoint in terms of things that I, i liked in the show at the end of the day um to David's point, I thought, you know, the fight scenes between Elizabeth and uh, Vivi were extremely well done. Um, it was one of those scenes that had much more impact behind it than any of the other kind of fight scenes that we got to see. Um, I also just enjoyed that journey of seeing, uh, even though it's, it, it happens so many times, I enjoy seeing how an AI can blur the lines of humanity. It's always kind of this interesting thing and, and something that's been covered in all different forms of, of mediums. So um, overall... Definitely didn't regret the time I took to to spend watching Vivi. Um, but something that I think moving forward with a staff of, of this level was ultimately expecting something a little bit more different. But again, mm. that goes into all our criticisms and stuff of maybe that could have changed more episodes. Maybe they could have, you know, used the time travel elements a little bit better. But overall, solid show. Music was really good, too. Yes. We, we haven't really mentioned the music. Uh yeah, music was okay. And you like the opening? My God! <laughs> I mean, like I said, I was kind of expecting more of a variety. That that was my complaint Dude, with the music. The opening was the most generic garbage there was. <laughs> like I said, it grew on you. But like no. I said, you you expect it more, right? Like the first two or three arcs, oh, you did God. get you did get a slight variety. But I was kind of expecting a lot more as it went on, right? Like Dude, I expected why, like evolution. You that's know? why they gave you the English man, as you like my pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say I love the ending song. The ending song was the song that I ending really was good. Enjoyed. Ending was very good. Yeah, I felt like that was opening was very generic. <laughs> With that said, um, <sighs> any final last thoughts, guys? I know we've kind of really yes. dissected and gone apart here, but want to you know leave it open one last time for anything uh, else before we wrap. Really up. quick, quick, uh, mm-hmm. quick. Uh, what was it? Um, basically, how David said it at the beginning, I give props to uh, anime originals. I think it's just really hard to pull off, and I think for what we've seen before. Uh, they did really well. Music, animation, uh, top notch, and I think the show definitely benefited with uh, a two uh, episode opener. I wish more shows would do that. That would be nice. I'm done. Uh, I just want to say, like, <laughs> kind of sucks because it felt like they were really strong with Great Pretender, so we're hoping that like they could follow that up with just as strong with Phoebe, and it didn't really, it didn't like hit that level, so. Um, but again, like yeah, I always, I will always appreciate any originals. Um, the show wasn't bad, but it's from to me, it's forgettable. I'm not gonna remember this show like in a year from now. I was already struggling to remember things happening uh, yeah, it was already. Only months. Like <laughs> so, so I'm gonna forget about everything in a year. So did, so did you watch Pretender? I did not, but I mean, I oh almost, okay, but almost, almost, but like people, people praise it except for the ending. Oh, so, people, like, okay, yeah. Same so, thing with Vivi. Okay, so. <laughs> So yeah, that's so so good. Good try, Wit. Maybe we we'll can do better next time. Hmm. Uh, I, I guess the only thing I can add is I would definitely recommend giving that a shot. Uh, I don't think you would regret it. Uh, but I mean, it, it it takes all kinds. So who knows? But definitely beautiful. Definitely has a lot of uh, unique music, uh, or enough unique music to keep you interested. Uh, but it was a enjoyable experience from yeah. beginning to end. Had the staff to carry it, so it makes it easier to do it in that regard with it being an original. So awesome. Well, you know, with, with that said, I want to thank you guys so much for for joining us for 
the the series in review here of Vivi Fluorite Eyes Song. You know, hopefully uh, some of the people that get a chance to, to check this out either on YouTube or, or listen to us, um, they can provide us some feedback. Uh, again, to David's um, call at the beginning of this call, we do have a Discord. So please go ahead and be sure to check that out. It'll be linked down in the description below. And uh, again, we are just a group of individuals that um, are providing, you know, weekly podcasts looking at anime series in reviews. We also do other videos focused in the anime space of top favorite opening songs. We've done anime quizzes in the past of guess that anime based on a <laughs> on, on few hints and things like that. So please be sure to check all those out on our YouTube channel. And again, thank you guys so much for, for joining us here tonight. And we hope to see you in the next one. Fun times. Fun times. We'll see you later. Bye. Oh, bye, bye. Bye, guys. That was a good wrap up, Justin. Yeah. That was good. I'm